Alright, so now that we have introduced what complex functions are, or essentially just functions of a complex variable, we can start talking about what we would do in case that we wanted to integrate a complex function. So to begin the definition, we're going to define the imaginary plane as the xy plane, so x is the real part, y is the imaginary part. And then we're going to define some region within that plane, which we call R, such that if we want to find the complex in the integral of a complex function between any two points along some curve then essentially what we can define is we can define the integral as integral the line integral of the function of z dz and right away you should notice that the integral of a complex function is is, is defined as a line integral so so if you remember something from vector calculus or multivariable calculus where we talked about line integrals you would actually know that when you're dealing with line integrals essentially what you want to do is you want to direct the integral along some some path c so that path can be arbitrary and, and we can essentially just denote that path by c and we know that between any two points we can define a whole bunch of different paths such that the sum of those paths or essentially those paths should give us the same integral because that's one of the properties of line integrals is the independence of the path so we know from the construction of the set of the complex variable set in terms of its real and imaginary part that we can essentially construct a function a function such that we have z dz is going to be equal to the integral of you remember that we defined f z as u plus i v where u and i sorry u and v are both functions of x and y so we can have the following definition which is the the fundamental definition behind complex integrals plus i dy and this element is just the dz element. Remember that if we differentiate both sides and then with respect to some common parameter and if x and y functions of some parameter t then we differentiate both sides and this is the same as writing dx plus i dy because remember each of these infinitesimal changes in each, in each direction is going to just contribute to that change in either the real along the real part or the imaginary part of that complex variable so now that we have this we can perform the expansion that is going to look like this u dx plus i v dy plus i v dx plus v dy and then if we group the terms together this is going to give us the following u dx minus v dy plus the imaginary part of that line integral is going to be v dx plus u dy and we can usually evaluate an integral of this form simply by knowing what u and, um, u and v are and then just integrate performing each of these line integrals uh, individually now the, the the good thing about this is that a lot of the stuff that we talked about and uh, when well a lot of the stuff that we have seen with line integrals before apply the same properties so for example we know the linearity property of line integrals that if a curve is actually the union of two or more curves so union represents just a connection so let's say that we have this curve c and then we can split it up into sections so that let's call this uh, this one c1 and c2 then that means that c is just the union of those two curves and then in the end we can represent the integral as follows so c1 c2 and essentially this is analogous to what you would do with uh, in a regular integral where you have where you're finding the area under a curve so let's say you want to find the area between any two points a and b then you know that this is the same and then let's say you have a point c in the middle then you know that the sum of this area plus this area is equal to that area so you can say that a to b of some function of a real variable is going to be equal to 
um, A to C C to B so this is just the same thing but instead of taking an area under a curve we're essentially taking a an arc length because the total arc length of that is going to be given by this sum so it's just a connectedness theorem and this is just a direct result of linearity with the integral operator so now that we have actually established this definition we can actually perform the following definition so with line integrals we can simplify things a little bit so that we don't have to actually go through the trouble of evaluating this expression and let's say we choose to parameterize our curve C by some parameter T so that means that we can represent the same line integral we can represent the same line integral from any two points A and B defined along that parameter and then we're going to have a function now of set of t so we're going to transform set into a function of t and I'll show you how to do that in a minute times the derivative of t with, of set with respect to t times dt so where does this actually come from? well we know that um, if we apply the chain rule here this is this set dt times dt this should cancel out and that gives us dz but this this form allows us to actually express the entire function in terms of one parameter t and that parameter t is going to allow us to perform regular integration on this integral without having to go through the trouble of separating the dx from the dy terms so what this means is that we need to choose a function t a parametric curve c defined by the function set of t which is composed of a real part and an imaginary part and both of those parts are going to be functions of t and that way if we take the derivative of this we're going to get x prime t plus prime t and then in the end our element of error is going to be dt so this is exactly the same integral but instead of taking it in this form because remember that integration with a complex function is not as straightforward as with a real function we can't just put any expression in there and then just expect to get a result by doing the, the normal integration we know how to do we need to actually go through this process because by definition it, it depends on a path the path is going to determine the value of that integral so we need to perform this transformation and in order to do this what we need to do is we need to define a paths or a set of paths that will allow us to find the function of t and then from that we can actually evaluate the integral so now that we have talked about that I can actually give you a series of examples so let's get started with some examples here so this is just pretty much just the theory behind it but now let, let's see what we can do with it so the first thing I want to do is I am going to define a curve or rather a line segment so let's have our xy plane here I am going to define a line segment from this point 1 1 to the point 3 3 and remember this is the imaginary axis so essentially this is the same as the point 3 plus 3i three and this is 1 plus 1i so this is our curve it, it is just a strain a straight line segment between those two points now the idea is we want to create a variable z that is a function of x and y but x and y need to be a function of a single parameter so how do we do that here how do we parameterize this particular curve well we know that the equation for a straight line is mx plus b right and m is just the the gradient of the line and b is just the y-intercept so in this case what we can do is we can find the gradient of this line so the gradient is going to be 3 minus 1 that's the change in the y direction and then in the x direction we're gonna have 3 minus 1 again because remember we're taking these limits so that's going to be 2 over 2 which is equal to 1 and we should expect that because this should be a gradient of 45 degrees 
and the B intercept, if you follow the same line, it should actually be zero. So in the end, we can represent Y as X. So Y should be equal to X. This is our function. Now, obviously, we want to make the independent variable equal to some parameter. So usually we use T. That's just standard notation. And then this means that our function of X is also going to be equal to T. So when we actually go about writing this, we are going to write the function of T equals to t plus i t because we're, we're only we all we're doing is substituting back into this equation here into this formula and now we're going to differentiate both sides to get the element of integration dz and that means that we're going to differentiate each of these with respect to t so this is going to be 1 plus i times the element dt so this is going to be our integration element so now that we have that what would be the integral of the following function? So let's just have a function defined by z along that path c. Well, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at what this is. So let's grab the integral, z dz. Now all we do is we're going to substitute that z by this particular uh, function here. And remember, what are the limits of integration in this case? The limits of integration on a parametric curve are always going to be the same limits of integration as the independent variable. And our independent variable in this case is x, so we're going to apply the same limits, so 1 to 3, to get the limits of t. So those are going to be the limits of integration because a line integral is essentially a definite integral. So we have limits of integration 1 to t, then we have t plus i t, that's our set function, and then our d set is this whole element, which is going to be 1 plus i dt. So this is what we're going to get from that. And now what are we going to do to do this? Well, we just need to expand this out, because we, when we have a complex, an imaginary unit involved, we just integrate everything as normal. It is just going to give us a complex number. So we're going to have this. Let's expand this out. So we're going to have t plus ti, right, from this multiplication, and then we're going to have plus ti, once again, plus i times i, that's minus, that's i squared equals to minus 1, so this is going to be a minus t dt, and then these two are going to cancel out, so we're going to be left with 2i t, and remember, this is treated as a constant, so we can take it out of the integral such that we get the following. So we're going to have 2i times t squared over 2, integrate as normal, 1 to 3, so we're going to apply this. So we're going to have 9 over 2 minus 1 over 2. And then this is 8 over 2, that's equal to 4. And then in the end, we're going to get the value 8i. So this is going to be the value of this complex integral directed along this curve and within between these two points. So this is a really, really important procedure that we just described here because not only does it make it possible for you to integrate uh, complex functions or, or essentially any complex function that you can represent in terms of a single parameter, but it, it applies to a wider range of cases. So, so long as the curve is well defined, so long as it is a continuous curve, you can pretty much define things and define the functions and the element this set in this manner, and then you can just perform integration as normal, despite the fact that f of z is just a function of a complex variable. And in the next video, I'm going to show you a few more examples that are going to show to you that there is an independence of path so that the following identity is going to be satisfied. So we said that if we have C is the connection of two curves, then we should expect this particular result to hold for any cases. So this is what we will do in the next video.